for Board of Assessors to order at 9 a.m. on Thursday, May 20th. I would ask everyone to bear with me because I'm obliged to read a rather lengthy opening statement. Good morning and welcome to the May 20th, 2021 Board of Assessors meeting. As chair of the Board of Assessors, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12 pursuant to executive order 2020-4, this body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that we are A, providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. We are utilizing Zoom through the city's IT department for this electronic meeting. All members of the Board of Assessors have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform, and the public has access to contemporaneously listen to this meeting through dialing the following number, 929 2056099. Once again, that number is 929-205-6099. And using the meeting ID number 822-4878-5345. And once again, that number is 822-4878-5345. And password of 989. 839. And once again, the password number is 989839. The public may also view this meeting on Comcast Channel 16. B. Providing public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting through public postings. Instructions have also been provided on the City of Nashville's website at nashvillenewhampshire.gov and publicly noticed at City Hall in the National Public Library. C, providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. If anybody has a problem accessing the meeting via phone or channel 16, please call 603-821-2049. And once again, that number is 603-821-2049, and they will help you connect. D, adjourning the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting via the methods mentioned above, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting will be done by roll call vote. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, the reason they, not, they are not able to attend the meeting in person, please also state whether there is anyone in the room with you during the meeting which is required under the right to know law. At this time, I will call the roll. Mr. Early. This is Robert Early, member of the Board of Assessors. I am following the governor's executive order and joining the meeting remotely from home. There's no one in, here in the room with me. Mr. Bergeron. This is Paul Bergeron, a member of the Board of Assessors. I am also following the governor's order and joining the meeting remotely from home. There is no one here in the room with me. And I am Daniel Hansberry, member of the Board of Assessors. I'm following the governor's order to join the meeting remotely. And there is no one present in the room with me. Okay, this time I will uh, ask if there is a motion to waive the minutes of the meeting from May 6, 2021, accept them and place them on file. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Yeah, are there any errors or corrections? Seeing none, I will call the roll. Mr. Early? Yes. Mr. Bergeron? Yes. Mr. Hansberry? Yes. Is there a motion to waive the reading of the non-public meeting minutes? Well, I guess to, to accept the non-public meeting, meeting minutes and place them on file from the meeting of May 6, 2021. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Are there any errors or corrections? Seeing none, I will call the roll. Mr. Early? Yes. Mr. Bergeron? Yes. Mr. Hansberry, yes. Motion is adopted. At this time, I will recognize Richard Vincent, who is the uh, department head of the assessing department. Mr. Vincent? Uh, thank you and good morning. I have 
two items. Uh, first one, um, I'm very happy to introduce our new department coordinator, Patricia Bell. Uh, Trish started uh, last week, I believe it was. Um, she'll be the new department coordinator. She'll be um, handling the uh, agendas and the Board of Assessors meetings uh, going forward. Um, you want to say hi, Trish? Yeah. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the department. Thank you. <laughs> Happy to be here. Thank you. And we're delighted to have you. Great. <laughs> we certainly are. Uh, second item is the July tax warrant. Uh, that is ready for signature. The tax warrant is in the amount of, oh, I just lost it, let's see. July tax warrant is in the amount of $116,611,004.54. Um, I'll leave it up to the board members to decide if they wanna come in and sign the warrant or if they would approve electronic signatures for the warrant. Okay. This doesn't require any action on our part, right? This has not been an action item in the past, if I remember correctly. Correct. It's a signature item. You just need to sign it. Yeah. I guess my thoughts are specifically on just this one item. We should probably sign it in person, but um, let's see what the rest of the board wants to do. Thoughts from the other board members? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I would agree with that. I have no problem coming in and signing it. I, I can do the same as well. Okay, so why don't we do that? We'll personally sign the document, Mr. Vincent. Okay. All right, we'll have it ready for you. Okay. okay. And I believe that's all I have. Okay. Right. Okay, so the next item would be educational and charitable exemptions that I will recognize Ms. Monaghan, for those. Good morning. Yes, this morning I have some charitable and educational exemptions for you um, per the list that was provided. Is there a motion to approve the charitable exemptions uh, as presented per the attached list? So moved. Is there a second? And I'll second that. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I will call the roll. Mr. Early? Yes. Mr. Bergeron? Yes. Mr. Hansbury? Yes. Motion is adopted. Okay. Next is educational exemptions. Is there a motion to approve the ec educational exemptions as presented per the attached list? So moved. Is there a second? And I will second that. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I will call the roll. Mr. Early? Yes. Mr. Bergeron? Yes. Mr. Hansberry? Yes. Motion is adopted. Does that conclude your report, Ms. Monaghan? It does. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, at this time, I will recognize Ms. Maserol, who has some veterans and elderly exemptions that she will be presenting. Good morning. First, I have 10 veterans credits that I would like to recommend for approval. Is there a motion to accept the veterans credits as presented per the attached list? So moved. Is there a second? I will second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I will call the roll. Mr. Early? Yes. Mr. Bergeron? Yes. Mr. Hansberry, <laughs> yes, motion is adopted. Ms. Maserol? The second um, item I have is two veterans denials that I would recommend for denial. Okay. Is there a motion to deny the veterans credits as presented for the attached list? So moved. Is there a second? Uh, I will second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I will call the roll. Mr. Early? Yes. Mr. Bergeron? Yes. Mr. Hansberry? Yes. Motion is adopted. Ms. Maserol? The last thing I have for the public portion of this meeting is the letter that I presented to you to consider 
the property, I apologize, I didn't put the address in the letter, at 3 New Haven Drive, Unit 301, for Mr. Roberge, uh, consider his late application um, for an accident, mistake, or misfortune. So it's 3 New Haven Drive? Yes, I apologize. I had the wrong address earlier this morning. So, if you have any questions, I'm welcome. I'm happy to answer them. Okay. So is there a, a motion to accept the late application for a veteran's credit for the property located at 3 New Haven Drive due to accident, mistake, or misfortune? So moved. Is there a second? I will second. Is there any discussion? Seeing that, I will call the roll. Mr. Early? Yes. Mr. Bergeron? Yes. Mr. Hansbury? Yes. Now, do you want us to act on this, Ms. Masrol, at this meeting? Right. Or... So I, I need first the motion to accept what you just did, and then I would like to recommend it for approval because he does qualify. Okay. So there is there a motion to grant the veterans credit for a three New Haven Drive? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Seeing that I will call the roll, Mr. Early? Yes. Mr. Bergeron? Yes. Mr. Hansberry, yes. Motion is adopted. And that concludes your report for now, Ms. Masrol, correct? Yes, thank you for your time. All right, thank you. All right, at this time, we will recognize Mr. Mandeal, who has an abatement recommendation. Mr. Mandeal? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have an abatement uh, for 22 Hawkstead Hollow. This is a simple data correction. Uh, the city recommends lowering the assessment from 178 500 to 172,800. Are there questions yes. for Mr. I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna ask if anyone had questions, thank you. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Are there any questions for Mr. Mayor Deal? I have no questions. I have no questions. All right, so is there a motion to approve the assessment reduction for the property located at 22 Hawkstead Hollow from $178,500 to $172,800. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I will call the roll. Mr. Early? Yes. Mr. Bergeron? Yes. Mr. Hansberry? Yes. Motion is adopted. Does that conclude your report, Mr. Mandel? It does, thank you. Good, thank you. Okay. Um, under unfinished business, um, there's a board member who has a conflict for the meeting, the last meeting in June. Would the board uh, be amenable to moving that meeting up a day early? And is the department amenable to doing that also? Is that going to be a problem if we have it on Wednesday, the 23rd of June, instead of Thursday, the 24th of June? I guess let's check with the board first because the board can't do it, then there's no reason in moving it. So, Mr. Bergeron, it's okay with you? Yes, it is. Thank you. And Mr. Early, does that work? Yeah, that's okay with me. And it's fine with me. Is Does that present a problem for the department? I don't see a conflict. Um, Just give me one minute to check the uh, department calendar. Okay. That should work. All right. So if we can take care of that with the scheduling then. So we'll move it from Thursday, June 24th at 9 a.m. to Wednesday, June 23rd at 9 a.m. That's fine. Okay, all right. Um, so we have reached the portion of the meeting which allows for public comment. I would just remind the speakers that uh, the comment period is limited to five minutes per speaker. 
So is there anyone present who's going to be addressing us this morning? I would Lori like Ortolano. To... Oh, go ahead. Okay. No, okay. could... yeah. no, go ahead. Uh, if that's uh, the older woman, go ahead. Okay. So could, if you could state your name and address for the record, please. Thank you. I'm uh, older woman Elizabeth Lou from 17 Roby Street. Go right ahead, Alderman Lou. I would just like to say, um, I, I'm inquiring whether the assessing department is considering unsealing of any of the 16 sealed minutes that stem from meetings since January of 2020, when um, I've heard uh, a great deal of concern about whether these sealed minutes are being unsealed when the qualifying reasons cited for sealing them no longer apply. And I understand that we seal minutes um, because they involve discussions of settlement proposals. And I understand that. But it would seem to me that once the settlement is made, unless there are qualifying reasons that remain, that we, that we would unseal these minutes as a matter of course. And I, um, I've read that the rationale uh, for not going ahead and unsealing minutes is that these settlements become publicly available. Um, however, I don't agree that, you know, this is the same as unsealing the minutes, the contemporaneous minutes of the meetings. And um, there's no way for anyone to know if that is equivalent um, to, to having access to discussions, et cetera. Um, in reviewing the number and nature of the right to know log that I have um, obtained, it's, it seems to me that with the technological tools at our fingertips, um, many, of these, many of these documents, if we put them in searchable format on our excellent city website, we could improve the public relations and decrease the cost of keeping a gatekeeper on hand to, test, to satisfy information requests. So I just hope and request that the use of non-public sessions be viewed as a temporary means to keep negotiations effective and that the interest of some and the rights of all of the city of Nashua uh, residents be kept in mind when weighing how much priority is given to unsealing the minutes in a timely manner. Thank you. Welcome. We'll uh, consult with legal counsel regarding your concern, Alderman Lowe. Thank you. You're welcome. Who's uh, up next? Lori Orlano, 41 Berkeley Street. Go right ahead. Just a couple things. Um, you know, your settlement agreement is interesting to me because when you sign it, you don't date it as board members. And it's, um, so it's hard for me to track what meeting it was done in. Like the property owner might sign it in March or February. You guys sign it in March. I see a lot of them sign March 15th, but your board meeting wasn't until the 18th. And I don't know that you have to sign them together. I don't know if they're, I don't know. I, I'm not certain. I just don't understand how they're done and uh, whether you sign them in a meeting or you don't. But it's, you know, when you have a legal document, it kind of surprises me that there is no date associated with your signatures, like the uh, property owner signs and dates the form. Um, it would just be more clear. Um, also, is there any way to tell which ones of these settlements are settlements generated by the courts versus settlements that were done by the city? Um, I'd like to know which, which settlements are BTLA or court driven and what are city driven. And I can tell with a lot of the current ones because there's a lot of 2020 settlements in there that those are obviously being driven by the city because the uh, 2020 wouldn't even be filed. They're, they're basically abatements right now and you're settling um, on 2020, which is interesting to me. You're settling lawsuits on 2020 that are still abatements. And so um, I don't fully understand that, but I guess that's the way it's done. But my assumption was when I see 2020 settlements that are signed, that the city is doing those and not the BTLA. Now I'm gonna call the BTLA and see if I can get their help in finding out which ones of these are actually done by them or the courts. But I would, I would be interested in understanding that. 
Also, the next time vision comes to address the board, I would like to get some information on the commercial properties, what they see for vacancies, um, what they've seen in valuations. It's something I brought up at other meetings and it will affect the shift in the burden between the residential property owners and the commercial property owners. I'd also like to hear them speak about the older properties and what they're seeing with the assessments uh, levels based on this depreciation factor and the use of effective year build. I can tell you over in my neighborhood, it is very significant. And when you go to the west side of, of Concord Street, there are so many low assessed properties. I pointed those out in 2018 where KRT left properties that it sold as part of the study at you know 78 or 80%. When your ratio has dropped 20% already, these are homes that if they're corrected are gonna see a 50% increase. These people don't even realize what's happening. I can tell you, I get instant messages from some of the people who say to me, can you check my property? Do you think I'm over assessed? And they happen to be one of those that was, you know, left at 78% in 2018. And I say, you know, you got one of the best kept secrets. You got a great deal going there. Don't be surprised in, in you know, 2022, if you feel a sharp sting. People don't even realize it. And it would be, I would really like to hear how um, Vision is doing and what they are seeing when it comes to looking at that factor and getting the decoupling done. You know, they come in and they give us a very generic review. That's fine. But, you know, let's put a little meat on the bone and get at what we're trying to get at here and understand where we stand. Thank you. Welcome. Just one comment on that. We did bring up the office issue with the vice president of vision when he was in, I know his last name begins with T. What's his last name, Mr. Vincent, the vice president of Vision Government Solutions? Uh, Torello, I believe. Mr. Torello. And what he's foreseeing is that Nasher is in a strong position uh, with the way things have changed as a result of COVID-19 and people have gotten comfortable at working at home and companies seem receptive to it. And he said, although in this area, for example, you would have a headquarters in Boston, he thinks you're going to see a number of satellite offices where people in this area would uh, report to those offices in Nashua. So he does not have a, a bleak or pessimistic outlook for the future of uh, office space going forward in Nashua. Um, who's the third person that's signed up? Is that person still going to speak? Because initially we thought there were three people. Is there a third person? I see no one stepping forward, Chair. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. And one other thing, too, with Vision uh, Direct Decliner, what's the possibility of having them come to the next meeting rather than the meeting of the 23rd? Because that meeting tends to be very lengthy. A couple of years ago, I remember that meeting ran for four hours. Is it possible to move them up to the first meeting in June under the circumstances? We will uh, reach out to them and certainly ask them to come. They've been very accommodating in the past. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Comments by board members. Are there any comments by board members? I don't have anything. Uh, neither do I. Okay. All right. Is there a motion to go into non-public session for two reasons? First, to discuss matters which, if discussed in public, would likely affect adversely the reputation of any person other than a member of this body you know, of this board unless such person requests an open meeting. This exemption shall extend to include any application for assistance or tax abatement, a waiver of a fee, fine, or other levy if based on inability to pay a poverty of the applicant pursuant to RSA 91-A colon 3 Roman numeral 2 parenthetical C. Second, under 91-A colon 3, Roman two, numeral two, parenthetical L, for the consideration of legal advice provided by legal counsel, either in writing or orally to one or more members of the public body, even though legal counsel is not present. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. 
I will call the roll. Mr. Early? Yes. Mr. Bergeron? Yes. Mr. Hansberry? Yes. Let the record show that we have entered non-public session at 9.25 a.m. And Ms. Mel?